that it's yeah. more it's easier it's yeah. for women but mm -hmm. that if something's wrong it's wrong it's easier for you to kill me than it is for me to kill you but well, let me ask you something wrong. let me ask you something you come yeah. from the legal world yeah are you and a paralegal the same no Oh, but how and I love how you didn't like uh, how you had disdain for when I brought that up. I the didn't have disdain. I just had disdain because it's a non sequitur. But... No, no, no. I'm going to explain the analogy here. The reason why is because you had to go through a lot more trials and tribulations to earn your title versus the paralegal went through a fraction of the schooling that you did. So you guys are not the same. So therefore, they don't have the same authority that you do as a lawyer because you busted your ass to become one. A paralegal is out there helping you with what you're doing, but you're the leader because you earn that right. But relationships aren't like, I earn relationships the authority. Are, though. Let me tell you why. Okay, tell because me. men are expected to protect and provide for women in general in a traditional relationship. So if I'm expected to protect and provide for you, I have some authority. I need to have some authority over you because I'm responsible for you. First of all, not all relationships have this traditional. I understand traditional, your perspective. Traditional. Word. I get that. Yeah. Not every single relationship is traditional. However, a majority of women, you might not be it, but I'm just making an argument for the majority. Mm -hmm. A majority of women prefer and would enjoy a traditional relationship where the man is the breadwinner, the protector, and the provider. Women typically, when they work, don't want to pay the majority of the bills. Most of them want to work, what I say, electively versus the man must work from a mandatory standpoint. I think if I land up 100 women, they'll prefer the guy to be the breadwinner and she could work on her own terms. So you think being the breadwinner automatically gives you that authority because you're earning the money and whatever Bre she's providing to the relationship is not as valuable in a traditional. No, order. I no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that as the breadwinner, that is just one of many components that puts the, the individual in the authority position, which I would argue the man needs to be in that position for att attraction. But to you're be maintained. assuming that the breadwinner role makes some give somebody that. Authority. It's just one component of it. What's the other? component? The protector and the provider and the leader. OK, and she's providing, I'm saying, in a traditional relationship the home and the kids that's yeah. not as that's not equal i never said that's not important but is that equal no it's not equal within the confinements of a relationship because the man needs so to be that's leader. not as important raising your children isn't important as no it's extremely you. important but is it as but it's important? different okay different yeah but is it unequal because you're arguing it's unequal so if you're saying unequal that means one role is more important than the other and that's what gives you the authority well the thing is is that the roles that i have are very important to the survival of the family from a holistic standpoint if and, I'm the and, protector the, and, and the raising provider, the, the next generation isn't important i'm not saying that what i am saying though is that for us to even be able to have the child in a safe space as in a family i need to make sure that i'm on point for us to be able to have that child to thrive i mean we forget about all this because we're in a modern day society with you know technology and all these modern conveniences but you know you got to remember that human beings are you know a progression of a bunch of different a uh, bunch of conditioning so before, we didn't have all the modern conveniences we did now. So the man had to be the leader and the protector and the provider to ensure that his wife was safe and the children were yeah. safe. So he was the head of the household for that purpose. But we're not in hunter-gatherer times anymore. We've evolved okay. for millions of years. And sure. I don't think we just malfunctioned in 2023 by having less stringent gender roles. We're evolving to our times and our circumstances. So to constantly be like, well, in hunter-gatherer times, millions of years ago or whatever many years ago, this was the way. If that doesn't apply to now. Well, you the, need to withstand rational inquiry. So oh, if you have a, okay. a, a a belief of yours, it has to withstand rational inquiry for the time. So you can't be like, well, this is how it is because it's evolutionary reason that I'm saying if it doesn't make sense in 2023, then you're stupid for following that. Okay, really? So let's go ahead with some rational inquiry. Okay. Why is it that women still prefer men that are stronger than them, tall than them, make more money than they do, are superior to them in almost every regard, even though they're able to create their own security with their own jobs, get their own education, protect themselves through the police state. Why do women still screen for all these factors if they don't need it and we live in this modern it's, world? Well, it's arguing? changing. So yes, women still, because it's still recent, especially if we look oh, at our okay, core evolutionary trajectory, it's still recent that women have been able to get these opportunities and since then if you look every single year women more women are okay with making or their partners making less and less than before so hypergamy is on the decline you can look this up i would argue it's actually on the incline okay well that's just contrary to stats but i don't know what to do at that well th th here's the thing there's a bunch of articles that show that women find men as less uh, less economically attractive than ever before why do we have higher divorce rates why do we have we don't have marriages? higher divorces we have we have, don't have higher divorce rates in the past and how long how long okay look Divorce rates, divorce rates, divorce yes. rates, women initiate 70 to 80 percent of divorces. Yes. And you constantly and marriages are at the lowest that they've ever been. Yes. Why is that? So you so this is something I see you do. You don't understand stats. Oh, like you shit. just don't sure, get it. Okay. So, so for do. instance, you say college educated women, for instance, initiate more of the divorces. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is true. But then you take that. You, I've seen you do it. You don't get it. Then you say, oh, college educated women are more likely to get divorced. They're actually way less likely to get divorced. One of the best things you can do to actually prevent divorce is with be, to get married to a college educated woman, especially if you're looking at longevity a college
college educated woman is 80% likely to have a marriage that lasts at least 20 years. A woman without a college degree is only 40% likely. But you guys conflate that because you're like, they're more likely to initiate a divorce. So when two people are getting divorced, yeah, a woman that has more um, resources is going to be more likely to initiate and leave a shitty situation. But those women are actually less likely to marry people or get into circumstances where they're going to divorce in the first place. One of the number one things you should look for if you're looking to make sure your marriage lasts is to marry a college educated woman. These stats have been replicated year after year after year. They're in 2023. I looked at 2023 stats right before this. One group of women has marriages that last the longest and are least likely to get divorced, and that is college educated women. But you guys constantly conflate those stats. Yeah, but it's harder for college college educated women to find a man in, in the this. first place because their standards go up alongside it. And again, this That's is not, not true, you, though, hold on, because hold on. you're with, like, I'm a lawyer. I could marry a lawyer in two seconds. I'm constantly around other lawyers. The college educated women are around more educated men. The, e the best position you could be in to marry a lawyer is to be a lawyer yourself. They marry lawyers most well, often. What percentage of men are lawyers? Well, you're what percentage <laughs> that's of women? What, like, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, but rather as we have become, than in a miserable but, relationship. No, no, no. What I'm, I'm trying to say, because here's the thing, we got, we got completely educated. off topic there. All I'm, I'm saying, because this all started with me saying that just because we have modern uh, conveniences does not necessarily mean that women have changed their mating practices. Women still want a man superior to them in almost every way if given choice. But it's so, going down as times change. So you guys are teaching something that's actually becoming less and less valid as time goes on. That's all I'm saying. Mm, I yeah. don't know about that because even, even though women are more educated now than ever before and they have all the opportunities, all the same rights and privileges, they still want a man that's better than them. I would argue hypergamy goes up as women are educated because women are less likely to settle when they that's are higher what, earners. Well, I mean, technically, yeah, but these women don't have to settle because you're around other high earners. Like, that's what I mean. Like, you're, you're around, like, lawyers tend to marry, it's called assertive meeting. It's, you're around other lawyers, you're going to marry lawyers, marry other lawyers, doctors, marry other doctors. I'm in a, if I'm in a law office 24 seven, it's so easy for me to marry a lawyer. This idea that you guys have, I don't know, in Miami I don't know about podcasting. If it's so easy to marry one, but yeah, if you're, I don't know about Miami podcasting world, but lawyers are not marrying 18 year olds that work at mcdonald's they're marrying other lawyers engineers so, are marrying so other engineers. the point is is that men are not pigeon-toed to marry within their class their socioeconomic level they are it's the attraction are. You know, similarity men, hypothesis men, it's men, one of the most researched theories in the psychology men, of attraction you tend to mate across iq across socioeconomic status across education this is how people generally mate generally no, men men well, are totally I, we're talking okay about generally they're Man, more totally okay. Down. They're more okay with dating down. And again, I don't know what. Maybe in new money world, it's different. But lawyers and doctors, they're not marrying girls like that work at CVS. It's just not a thing. And they're not marrying hot girls off Instagram. I have a. My mom's a lawyer. My sisters are lawyers. My cousins are lawyers. All my friends are lawyers. If we all met up and one of them was like, "Oh, I'm bringing my girlfriend," this 19 year old I met on Instagram, never would happen. They're dentists. They're other lawyers. They're yeah, they're not going to bring them around, y'all, because like. But are they marrying listen, them? They if they're, they're marrying shame. them, listen, if they're marrying them, they then marrying you. Mm -hmm. Then you're divorcing them, and then they're going with a harder. But I'm chick. way far less likely to divorce them. That's what no, I just told not. you. Yes, that. Look up the stats. College-educated women get divorced the least. Uh, the likelihood that my marriage is going to last 20 years is 80 percent. I don't know who here just has a high school education. That's 40 percent. That's double. You specifically, or you mean women that are lawyers? College-educated women. Me, I don't even believe in marriage, so not me. But so. <laughs> Yo, you know what's funny? Me. You should date Destiny. She shifted. Are yeah, you going to bad face? Are you going to bad face? It doesn't. It doesn't. You're there's like a several four. I address a bunch no. of your, or your points, and then you're like moving it. No, like, what, oh, what no, point? Like, oh. No, what point did you address? I, I, you know, I like to argue. I'm a lawyer. So yeah, no, I know that. But like the whole point about like, um, <clears throat> you're saying rational inquiry. Like women, the, the t times have changed, and women have changed and have evolved in it. But I, I would argue women have not evolved because women still want a man that's over six feet tall. Do you know how they long it takes for evolution? Like, so the fact that women have been able to work, I get that. But my argument, my argument is simply that women haven't really changed that much as to what they're attracted to. That's all I was if arguing. That's the you case, tried to make the argument that they did because of modern conveniences. I'm arguing evil modern conveniences. Women haven't really changed what they're attracted there, to. There's so many articles. I implore your audience to look up, looking up how high hypergamy is on the decline. It's still thing. It's still a thing. I'll give you that, but it's on the decline as circumstances change. If it's on a decline, why are more men reporting lower levels of sex than ever before? That's uh, so are you looking at the 2018 study? Because no, there was one not... literally that just came out that showed guys between 18 well, and 20. Part of the reason that they're that's also happening is because people are getting married older. So a lot of the reason people had sex younger before is because they were married. That's one of the reasons that people say that. And I'm not saying that men, some men don't have it tough out here, but not some, a majority. It's not 
It's not a majority. Yes, it is. A majority of men aren't struggling. A majority of men are, are not. Ha- I mean, maybe majority of your audience, but <laughs> no, a majority of men. A majority are of men in general are struggling with women. If, if they weren't, you weren't able to leave a lucrative law career and go into a only only fans. Fans and make a bunch yeah. of money. Wait, so only fans That's is it. only because men are struggling. Jack, yes. upwards of ninety percent of men, upward, very normal, educated men. Far more educated than they're struggling. Struggling. They're struggling No, women. they're not though. I have so many couples that watch me. Upwards of ninety percent of men Bro, consume and watch. Couples might be two percent of your audience. No, say most men that work a regular job are. Struggling. You guys also don't understand that highly educated people don't have the same views on sex work as you guys do. So a lot of them, if they're gonna watch porn, they rather watch it in an ethical way. OnlyFans is a way you can watch it ethically. The money goes directly to the creator. Nobody's under eighteen. We all have to be verified. And I feel like guys who get pussy don't subscribe to OnlyFans. That's fans. absolutely yeah, not yeah. The case. yeah. That's just not the case. I mean, you can feel that way. Yeah. But that's just I not just, true. I don't know. That's why I feel like the reason why pornography is so popular nowadays, especially, is because it's so it's so easily accessible. You can get it for free. Guys are able to satisfy their sexual thirst with, through variety, through the internet. And a lot of guys are struggling with women. I mean, that this is a fact at this point. This isn't even like, I don't think so, blah, blah, blah. A majority of men absolutely struggle with dating and meeting women in the What do you mean course. by struggle? Like, where was that? Like, how is struggle? How was that um, tested for? Like, what is struggle? Like, they're having, like, that just means they can't get every girl they want? Or are they not having sex? Like, majority of men are not not having sex, unless you're looking at a specific cohort age group or that 2008. How do you know? What do you mean? How do I know? Because that's not what the stats show. I what, mean, what's, wait, what's your study? What do you mean? What's my study? Just like that same 2018 graph that all the incels like you guys are and you not saying you guys are, but you guys use that's not been replicated in 2019, 2020, 2021. That actually shows more women are having less sex than men are. And is, though even that one was at a third. I don't know where you guys are getting majority. Majority is over 50 percent. And if you guys are saying struggling, you have to define struggling. Struggling is a very vague term. So if you're saying struggling in the sense of, oh, they're struggling because they can't get the baddest bitch on Instagram, sure. But what do you mean by struggling? Most guys have a very difficult time getting dates, getting any type of intimacy from a female, and uh, being able to be successful in their dating ventures. Most guys really struggle. Women find 80 to 90% of men is unattractive on Tinder, Bumble, and all the dating apps. Guys struggle on that. A lot of guys have issues with being able to go to the, up to a girl and talk to her. I'm That's sure true. plenty of you guys have experiences where a guy comes up to you, and he's awkward, he's stammering, he can't necessarily say what he wants to say. And what I'm saying is that the reason why pornography is exploding in popularity is because so many guys struggle with women and so many guys are socially awkward and aren't well, able I mean, to, to convey attraction through the way that they behave or the I way mean, that they speak. I think I don't think pornography is just like some of us. Like, I mean, even when I'm in a relationship and I'm horny, I masturbate. I look at porn like sometimes even if you're happy in your sex life, those here's, key word. Look at, here's the key word. You don't have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. But how are you assuming they have to? So they if they're watching it, they have to. But if can I'm going to go out and get laid as quickly and as easily as you can. No, but that how is that? That's different. <laughs> that's very though. important, though. Very yeah. Important. But just because they can't do it as easily as I can doesn't mean that every time they're watching watching porn is because they have no other they, they don't have sex with anyone ever right like can't like, a lot of men upwards of 90 men watch porn upwards of 90 men single tiny percent of men single i mean maybe you guys are going to say upwards of 90 percent of men are all struggling and they're men desperate. men don't have the same sexual access and ability to attract the opposite gender that women do so even if they are getting laid with maybe one girl or maybe a girlfriend that no longer fucks them or takes them seriously whatever does not necessarily mean that they're still not struggling with females in general especially if they have a female or they have a girlfriend she's not getting them sex anymore she's not attracted but you're to them creating a false dichotomy you're saying that okay if i'm watching porn wow. then that's a hundred percent obviously be- i still could get somebody else but you're saying every Every time a guy is watching porn, every guy that's on OnlyFans has no options. They can't get sex. They're all struggling. I didn't say that. No, but, no, but most I said guys. Wa- excessive porn consumption, a lot of the times, is a byproduct. Excessive? Of- excessive, like problematic porn use? Because that's what the medical term for it is. I think that you have more of a case for, but not just normal cons- consumption of porn. Consumption of porn. Here's the thing. Guys it's all are good consumption with women, of porn excessive. Guys that are good with women typically don't watch pornography. And where are you getting that from? Is there a stat on that? Or are you just, is that your feelings? No, that's not my feelings. That's just, I mean, that's anecdotal at that point. Because okay, yeah. every guy I know that's, that's good with women, which is a minority, okay. right? So you can't do a study on that. You can't go line up a bunch of guys like, okay, I need guys that have a lay count of this much, blah, blah, blah. Everybody that I know that's good with women typically does not watch pornography. Okay, so if and, we're just doing the battle of the anecdotes, I know plenty of guys that are good with women and they still watch pornography. So now we're just your anecdote versus you don't know that though what do you mean i don't so you know and i don't they talk to you but they don't talk Uh, well they're not going to be as light they're not going to be as honest with you they're going to try to maybe put themselves in a certain light or maybe they're having sex with prostitutes well at that point your claim isn't falsifiable and if it's not having sex with prostitutes etc like they're not going to be as honest with a well with a female and and again like i said before then your claim is not falsifiable if it's it's, not falsifiable we're not talking about logic here's the thing the bottom line is this Men absolutely struggle in the sexual marketplace with finding and dealing and dating with women. 
Like that's a fact. That's yeah, not even some men. But you see, a majority. majority. I don't know about majority. It depends what you mean by. So you're saying they struggle. They they're not getting all the women they want. I would say yes. Then that's true. If that's what you mean by struggle, their mental health is literally freaking crushed. Can I explain something to you that I said earlier? Yeah, guys are absolutely struggling with women. That's like a fact. Some guys, yeah. I would argue majority. Yeah, you would argue majority. I would say it's not a majority. So that's where we disagree. What percentage do you think struggle then? I I don't like to talk about what I just think. I like to look at what data we have available and i don't i have yeah but you also have to be realistic and understand that some studies are not going to pass ethical standards that's well yeah okay so i I, 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 have to use a little bit of a lot of studies and i look at the ones that are replicable falsifiable peer review i like to i look i know how to read studies and so i mean i'm sure there's stats on there but even the ones the worst ones i've seen show it at about a third a third is still not a majority that's still a lot yeah, it's a lot. And, I agree. and that's and that's just the guys that are reporting, and we know that men but are more likely. We have no way of knowing know that men those are more guys... likely to overreport their sexual activity. Uh, well, we also have no way of knowing that those men that are struggling are the ones um, watching OnlyFans or watching more porn. Can I say a that? lot of oh, a problematic porn use also overlaps with like anxiety, depression. There's a bunch of other stuff. There's something called moral incongruence. So they've done tests where they look at men who watched a lot of like think they have a problem with porn and men who don't think they have a problem and like how much it's interfering with their daily activities. I'm just et saying porn consumption is a component of guys struggling with women. I'm not saying that is the reason. I'm saying that's a component as to why guys struggle. So you're so you're saying it's correlated or it's causing or what are you saying? It's a part of the issue. 